Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. In the last episode we climbed up the spoke, we managed to open the mainframe where Killer is and our friend Neo Vend, also known as Navigator, got stuck. So I think we should focus on trying to free him. We need to get ourselves some high rolls which makes me think that when I rest here, I think I'm going to just use the stabilizer now so we guarantee ourselves all of our dice. It seems like the safer option. Okay, let's uh, end the cycle and hope we get some good dice. But hey, that's some good dice right there. Let's go back up the spoke and see what ones we can actually do. What is it? Ascension car. Here we go. Ascend to the hub. Uh, what do we have? The AE branch? Ah, of course, we need to go into the network and unlock the key nodes. A five? Would a three also work? Because there's a three on the side. It does. Huh. Interesting. Use the three. I mean, what else are we going to use it for? This node is part of Solheim's ship's internal systems. Welded to the hub as a makeshift dwelling. Right, plus one encrypted key. Keynote number two. This requires a six. Would a four work? No, it's just three or six, which is very weird. This node is connected to a remote array and it buzzes as it picks up the drive signatures of passing ships. Another encrypted key. And oh, a noise. Uh-oh. A glint, like a light travelling along the edge of a wave, fills your eyes. Then the blade follows, a long head with two dead sockets slipping towards you in silence. You freeze, hoping it will pass you by, hoping that it will not simply slice through you like air. The blade head nears, slides past you, almost. It nicks you, grazes you. You are desperate to cry out, to call out. But you hold your silence and simply watch the blind eyes of the killer glide past, empty of all thought. Then the blade winks into the dark and you are alone again. Now you cry out. Ouch! Little bastard. Alright, we got one more keynote. What do we need for this? A four. Oh, lucky, isn't it? This node is barely visible. Just an access key left on some long forgotten desk in a sealed Solheim office. Nothing happened that time. Let's leave the network. And let's see if we can unlock some of these doors, eh? Wait, how can we have the AE branch 2, 1... What's this one down here? AE branch 03. This controller protects the last spindly branches feeding into the mainframe. Well, I only needed three, so... Let's unlock it. This branch has been unlocked. This branch has been unlocked. Let's do this one too. And then finally, I guess this one? And hopefully this works. I expected there to be a way to uh, speak to them. Oh, okay. Now I have to do these checks, huh? 
Oh dear. So, we can slice the hardware. Forget hacking the system. Killer has to die. If you can slice the branch connections, the mainframe will shut down. Freeing navigator. Or we can loop the branches. With access to the branches, you could redirect them to form a loop, isolating the mainframe with killer inside. But freeing navigator. In theory. It's going to be considerably harder. Oh, then again, this one has the possibility of being plus three. Let's, let's loop the branches, shall we? A little bit more hard work, but... How bad can it be? You bend one of the branches like a hazel twig, aligning the flow away from the mainframe and into another branch. A four will turn into a five? Yeah, there's no chance of getting minus condition, so let's try that. Yep, there we go. You bend one of the branches like a hazel twig. We gained five cryo, and we only have to get two more here, so we'll probably do that in the next uh, the next cycle. Let's descend. We need to go grab ourselves something to eat. Emphis. We also need to cross the Founder's Gap at some point, but let's focus on one thing at a time, shall we? Uh, Emphis, Emphis, Emphis. There you are. Fifteen cryo. I still have this, these scrap components that I need to uh, sell. Wait, I'm going to hold on to them till I absolutely have to sell them, because you never know, maybe they'll come up in something else. But let's rest in the container. That's some good dice. Not brilliant, but they should be good enough to achieve what we need to achieve. Let's go back up to the spoke again. Now we're still waiting for Sabine to get back to us. That should happen soon. Right, killer. Let's use our four. Save the five for something else, maybe. There we go. As you blink into the cloud, you see the last flickers of life from the mainframe. This vast machine once ran the whole station, span it up, directed and processed the flow of energy, water and data, fed the lives of thousands of people. Now it is finally dead. Navigator is beside you, and you both look out at the perfect ring that encircled you both, woven from the data branches that once fed the mainframe. You see a glint along its edge, and that familiar blade-like head rises to the surface, like the cresting fin of a shark, and then slips into the loop again. All that you can see of Killer's body after that is slight thickening of the loop. And that thickening begins to travel around on a long and slow sojourn that will last it forever. I'm surprised at you, says Navigator, drifting faintly around you in a lazy orbit, as if to shake off their imprisonment. Killer had been wandering blind for so long. Did you not think to end them forever? Perhaps they can be saved. You are naive. They are a killer by nature. Look what they did to their own home. Navigator gazes into the darkness. This place was their domain and prison, and they had followed their directives for so many decades, they roamed here. They cut the threads of the mainframe, executed its administrator AIs, and then kept slicing. At some point, they cut away their own ability to see, to sense, to taste, to speak, and yet they kept cutting until only those three threads remained, 
Gramillions that once thrummed here. Only their blindness and chance kept them from cutting those final three fatal cuts. There is a ceaseless violence in the kind of system that creates beings like this. Those that will execute commands endlessly, even to their own destruction. Navigator looks to you for your thoughts. Their sentience should be respected. So be it. But would they respect our rights equally? Navigator turns away. You watch the data points of the station spin around you, blending with the fixed stars. There is something satisfying about finally wrenching the last threads of control from this central point. It was little more than a ghost by the time you reached it, but this place deserves to be haunted by better ideas than a totalizing system of control. Navigator floats beside you. It is free now. This station no longer presents a hazard for illegal entities like me. They turn to you, their face a cloud of shimmering light. In fact, in time, perhaps it can be a refuge. A refuge? That sounds like something of value. Something worth building. A dark shape passes across your vision. A distant curve of something like smoke or oil. A fluid, shifting tank of total darkness. The green way, says Navigator, following your line of sight. It was cut off from the moment of the collapse, so hunter or killer could never reach it. Now it's closed off to us, separated from the cloud. What system is inside it? It may be totally dark, or perhaps some other old protocols are isolated there. Navigator turns to you, and we have now seen what decades of isolation can do to a protocol. If we could extract an access cipher, they pause and then blink out of existence. You freeze, shocked, but a moment later they reappear with a glowing polygon of data. Here, the cipher you need. You take it, still shocked. I'm not used to being free, to being able to move and explore and extract without fear, without limits. Navigator does a little twirl. This will take some getting used to. Thank you for this gift. They whirl their spheres around you. The entities of this station will always be friends to you, sleeper, and I to them. It is true that mutual need is required for friendship, but I must admit I had not considered the value of offering assistance without personal gain. I will think on that. Navigator loops around you rapidly, suddenly eager to test their newfound freedom. But first, I will explore. Perhaps there are still intelligences that hid themselves as I did, encased in simple systems, cut off. Navigator glows. I should like to free them. And with that, they drift away, flickering, glowing, and shifting so rapidly you lose sight of them among the glittering rim of the eye. You feel a pang of jealousy, free without a body to weigh you down, or fear to limit you. How must it feel? Your eyes fall on the greenway and its secrets, but perhaps you can wait until after you have celebrated this victory. What did we get? We got a Greenway Cipher. It's a shame we don't actually have access to the Greenway yet, but that is next on our list of things that we want to achieve. We could spend some stuff in 
a hub to see what we unlock from being a weightless wanderer. I am curious. Let's, let's see. Let's do the one that gives us plus one here. We do need money, but we still have... We still have data we can sell. Kind of. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's try it. Let's see what happens. The stacked bays house a flow of incoming and outgoing ships. The digital manifests will help you get your head around this place. Let's go again. Okay, so we need two more. Do you reckon we'll get really lucky with this? With our four? There's a 25% chance it goes horribly wrong. Let's see what happens. Ah, we only got a plus one. It is overwhelming, but you start to piece together a picture of which bays serve which purposes, from repairs to refueling. We leave here. Go back down. Oh, wait, no, we have actually unlocked somewhere. Hang on. We've unlocked the Gimbal Lounge and Bliss. Let's go to the Gimbal Lounge. What's in here? Buy a spacer meal. The gimbal sells itself on its spinning spear sphere, which claims to produce therapeutic gravitational effects. It doesn't. But they sell food. It's 18, Cryo. Why is it more expensive here? Alright, well, you know, I need food. Let's try it. Oh, it gives me three energy, huh? Spacer food is a slurry of modified compounds and vitamins laced with a dose of algae. It's effective nutrition, but little else. Doesn't taste very nice, basically. Let's go speak to Bliss. No way, Moritz. You take those substandard fillers back to the shit heels who sold you them. You hear the voice echoing out of the bay as you pass. Moments later, someone who you assume is Moritz drifts out with it, dragging a pallet of filter cartridges by a tether. Hey, you out there! The same voice echoes out of the entrance. Looking for work? Who, me? Everyone on this station is looking for work. Get in here. Seems fair. The voice is coming from someone shorter than you expected. She is floating in the microgravity of the docking bay, beside a half-deconstructed life support unit that looks like it might have exploded at some point. She points a wrench in your direction. You know anything about these things? She doesn't wait for an answer. Scratch that, just, just help me with the casing. Okay. All right then. She deftly moves around the unit, making space for you beside the central seam in the dented case. Just take a grip here and lift out and up, and then I can get in and unbolt it. She whacks the unit with the wrench. Whole thing is twisted to shit. You dig your fingers under the casing and lift it away, the metal squealing from the force. She puts her hands under, spinning the wrench to slip out the bolts, catching them in her other hand when they spiral free. All good. The casing lifts off, revealing the ornate piping of the unit's interior. She whistles at the mess of ducts and filters. By the way, everyone calls me Bliss. She pats you on the shoulder, offering little in the way of an explanation. Oh, uh, what do you do here? Repairs, fit-ups, tear-downs. Bliss starts pushing and pulling at the ductwork, looking for fractured pipes. We haggle for contracts, but the good ones get snapped up quick by the bigger base, so here I am trying to get this M2 unit running again for one of the freelance tugs. Small-time stuff. Hold this. She rips out a ribbed pipe and hands it to you like a freshly caught fish. We turn stuff around fast and neat, and maybe we get a chance at landing something bigger. 
Something starts hissing in the unit, and Bliss quietens it with a precise whack. But to be honest with you, the way things are going, I can already see the other crews licking their lips, ready to take this place over. He looks up at you. I'm almost out of luck. What happened? Long story. Some people just can't keep promises. Keeps working, twisting aside pipes with care. Here we are. Bliss pulls her hand from deep inside the unit, and out it comes, clutching a lump and cube, scorched black. This thing must have overloaded and popped half of itself out the side. We both dug down to the side of the unit and spot the exit wound. Its edges fringed with more scorch marks. Grab me a replacement converter from the racks, will you? Where is it? Bliss, already elbow deep in the unit again. Y you'll see it, she waves you away. You kick off from the unit and drift over to the wall racks, where a catalogue of parts sit secured in clamps. Coloured tape and scrawled notes flutter across the wall, a complex organisational system of Bliss's own design. Or just a big mess. You try to pick out the right part. Oh, Christ. Um... You wanted a converter, not a transformer. Did she specify what the name of the thing was? Hang on. M2 unit. So, M2 converter. You grab the part and push back to the unit. Bliss holds out an arm and you pass it over, the converter spinning gently as it leaves your hand. Perfect! You passed! She straightens up from the unit. That is, if you want to work here. Bliss rubs her hands clean, looking down at her palms. Truth is, I need a hand here. My partner skipped out on me and left me with a whole mess. You seem like you might at least be better at spotting a clean air filter than Moritz. I'd be happy to. Wait, he frowns at the racks. That's not all of it. My old business partner, they rinsed the place, emptied the accounts. To bid for jobs, we need to put down deposits, bring in parts, pay tug fees. For that, he looks nervous, embarrassed. We need chits. You want me to pay to work come on it's not like that we'd be partners straight split bliss settles herself against the unit and looks off into the distance i guess i look pretty stupid here i am asking any random passerby to be my business partner no offense he manages a smile oh, i get it thanks he meets your eye i appreciate it Bliss goes back to working on the unit. Look, it's no pressure. You find the money, or you find someone who has, or you just forget the whole thing, up to you. She gestures for you to help her refit the casing, and you both slot it back into place. I think I'm good to wrap this one up for now, but if you are into it, come back and we can bid on a new contract. Something to get our teeth into. Something that pays. Gives you a serious look. You can trust me, I, I don't say this stuff lightly. You kick away from the bay, propelling yourself back into the handholds at the entrance. You slip out with a wave. And as you do someone, and as you do, and as you do, someone slips back in. You hear bliss as you glide down the passageway. Maritz, I swear to God, if those filters aren't clean... You smile. Seems like this. It'd be interesting. How much money does she want? A hundred cryo? A scam or an opportunity? This seems solid enough and this might be your best chance to get in on the hub's repair trade. That seems interesting. Hmm, but with that... I think I'm going to end this episode here, so thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you again to the members of the channel. You really do help support me here, and 
allow me to keep making these videos. But as always, see you next time. <laughs>